Hey coaches, Brian Willie with Intentionally Grounded. On today's video breakdown, we're going to look at the Oklahoma offense and focus on one of their main running schemes, the GT counter. Okay, so now we're going to go into the rule system for how Oklahoma and many gap scheme teams block the GT counter starting up front. And we're first going to start with the play side rules of the play side tackle, guard, and center. And each one of these players play side has a rule system that they go through, a checklist, if you will, of three things. The first thing, is there somebody in my gap? If there is, that trumps everything, and you're going to block the person in your gap. That's part of the gap scheme. The second thing that they ask themselves, is there somebody on me? If there's nobody in my gap and somebody on me, that's the next guy I block. If there's nobody in my gap or nobody on me, then I go to the linebacker backside okay, or linebacker away from me. Now you go through that progression. Typically, if you're going to get to the second step and you have a line, you have a defender on top of you, many times that's going to tell you you need to communicate some form of a help if it's present or available for you. If it's not, then it's somebody you're just going to have to base block yourself and overtake on your own. So the first rules here, again, just to kind of draw up are simple. So if we go for the play side tackle here, and let's imagine that we're running our GT counter scheme here to our left. His real progression would be simple. First, is there anybody in my gap? If there is, he's blocking him. If there isn't, he then looks, is there anybody on me? If there is, he blocks him. If there's nobody in the gap and nobody on him, he looks for the linebacker backside. Okay. Play side guard goes through the exact same rules. Gap on me, linebacker backside. Okay. Center, same rules. Gap on me, Linebacker backside. Now, typically when we're looking at a 4-3 defense, you're going to see a lot of times a three technique or a one technique that's going to be part of this forefront. So in many cases, you're going to have this tackle if there's a three technique over here, blocking the defender in his gap, in this case, the play side B gap. And then he's going to probably get help here from the play side guard, who more than likely is not going to have anybody in his play side A gap. So those two would be responsible for a double team that would carry their double team towards the backside linebacker. In this case, the center here, he also is going to more than likely be blocking back on a one technique. If for whatever reason there isn't a one technique, he might have some sort of a shade on a nose, for example, if he's going to be going against an odd front. Otherwise, what we like to do in our offense, and you'll see Oklahoma do it the same way, if the center doesn't have anybody versus a four front in the one technique, a lot of times they have them in a three, they'll just send the center back on the three technique instead of sending him second level. So then... If the play side rules are, is there somebody in my gap? Is there somebody on me? Then linebacker backside. Our backside rules are going to be a little bit different because those two are going to be our pullers. As you're going to see with Oklahoma, they're going to pull not always just the guard and tackle. Sometimes they'll pull, or pull their guard and also wrap with their, their H-back or fullback. Sometimes you'll see them uh, pull their tackle and could potentially pull a tight end if they really wanted to. It really doesn't matter for them, but the majority of the reps you're going to see them, especially on the film clips I will show you, will pull the guard and the tackle. And so the rules here for the guard and tackle pulling, if you start with the guard, he's going to be the kickout block. So he's going to be searching for the end man of the line of scrimmage, typically going to be a five technique. If it's going to be a four front, it could be a heavy four technique. It really doesn't matter. It's going to be the end man on the line of scrimmage. And he's going to be aiming for the inside number of that end man on the line of scrimmage. He's going to try to kick him out. That kickout's extremely important because the tackle is reading that kickout block, and he's going to wrap inside of that kickout block for the front side linebacker. Now, the front side linebacker is somebody he's going to identify pre-snap as the first linebacker typically towards the play side outside of the center. So for example, if this is the center and you have a mic sitting right here, the first linebacker inside the box play side would be his front side linebacker or sometimes called the play side linebacker. If for whatever reason, this end man on the line of scrimmage will crash and the kickout block is unable to be done, then all that's going to happen here is this guard is going to log the defensive end, and then the wrapper, instead of going inside of it, will just make a wider path, and he'll wrap for the play side linebacker a little bit wider. Typically, anyway, if you're going to have a defensive end that's crashing, you're going to be somebody else in a gap exchange coming over the top anyway, so that just keeps our rules the same for our tackle. His pull just becomes a little bit wider. Now, granted, you know, the backfield is going to be a little bit different in terms of how they present things, but that's the basics for how Oklahoma and many gap scheme GT scoundrels look. So now we're going to dive into a few different variations that we see specifically with Oklahoma and how they block their GT counter. 
So here you can see with our first down playbook, we have the GT counter scheme drawn up against a traditional 4-3 front. Now, in this case, we're going to say just for the sake of argument that they have set the three technique or the strength to the boundary, and they've set the one technique here towards the strength of the formation. Now, when we go through all of our rules, all the things should be the same and everything should check out. We start with our play side tackle here. Does he have somebody lined up in his gap? In this case, he has a three technique. That's going to be the person he's responsible for, so he's going to execute a down block. Now we have our guard. Does he have anybody in his gap? He does not. So does he have anybody over top of him? No. So then he can help, but he's still responsible for his play side gap. So for any reason, you see any kind of run through by the will or any, any run through by the mic that comes through down in this area, that play side guard then has to come off that double team and come down on that uh, blitzing linebacker or that run through. So although he's now executing the double team to help carry this to the backside linebacker, he still is going to be responsible for his play side gap. That doesn't change at all. Center over here still has his responsibilities. Does he have somebody in his gap? In this case, he has a one technique, so he's going to block them. As you're going to see with a lot of GT schemes, you can do a couple different things with this backside defensive end. Many times you're going to give some sort of a token fake to hold this backside defensive end. You might bring motion every once in a while to hold that backside end, or you can read them. In many cases with Oklahoma, they're going to read the backside end uh, because they have an athletic quarterback that can go make that guy miss. And then the guy who's typically either given the fake um, in, a, in a typical GT counter scheme, now he just becomes their plus one blocker out on the perimeter um, for the either the, the force player or also the second level defender, like such as a safety. So in this case, again, we got our blocking scheme, everything up front. We have this three technique that the guard and the tackle are going to be hopefully carrying the double team to the backside linebacker. Again, play side guard responsible for run through. Backside guard here is going to come pull, kick the end man on the line of scrimmage out. Backside tackle then is going to wrap for the play side linebacker or first linebacker play side of the center. Okay, now we're going to look at the GT counter scheme versus a three front or an odd front. All the rules still stay the same. Our play side rules are still, do I have somebody in my gap? Is there a player on me? And then if not for both of those two, we go to backside linebacker. So starting with our play side tackle, do I have anybody in my play side gap, which is play side B? He does not. Does he have somebody on top of him? In this case, he does. Now, versus an odd front, this block's going to be a little bit more tricky than most because he's not quite sure exactly what this defensive end's going to do. So no matter what the defensive end's technique's going to be, we always tell our tackle, you still have gap integrity. So your first responsibility is still going to be this B gap. So if, for example, the defensive end crashes in front of our play side tackle. Then we just tell our tackle to take him. Just he's maintaining his play side uh, gap integrity, and he's just going to take the crashing defender. If, though, the defensive end decides to either play it um, as a C gap defender or decides to kind of maintain his position and run his feet, then what we tell our tackle is to just trust his rules and to go to the backside linebacker. Play side guard rule still the same. Does he have anybody in his play side gap? He does not. Anybody on top of him? He does not. So then he works the backside linebacker. In this case, he can help out the center who doesn't have anybody in his play side gap, but does have somebody on top of him. So their track still is going to be working this double team towards the backside linebacker. More than likely, they're not going to be able to get this um, backside Mike, who's probably going to be scraping over the top once he sees pull. So as a result, that backside linebacker is probably going to be either this um, this force player or alley player, the, the outside linebacker, or could possibly even be one of these different safeties that are up here that are coming into the box as they see run. However, so if we go through all of our, our scheme this way and we go look at our backside rules, our backside guard, his rule doesn't change either. He's still kicking out the end man on the line of scrimmage, but his kick out is going to be predicated on what this defensive end decides to do. If he crashes in front of our play side tackle, obviously our tackle is going to take him. So then our kick out block becomes on the end man on the line of scrimmage, which is at the outside linebacker, who against this front is more than likely going to be walked up anyway. Okay. If this defensive end plays a heavy technique or plays a C gap technique, then the play side or the excuse me, the backside guard is going to kick out the defensive end here. So we're going to assume first in this situation is to go through everything that the defensive end has crashed. So our backside guard is going to kick out the outside linebacker. That then means our backside tackle is going to wrap for the play side linebacker or our first linebacker that shows play side, which in this case would be the mic. Now, if, for example, we kind of rewind that a little bit here, and then all of a sudden this defensive end plays a heavy technique, 
and stays outside. Well, then our kickout block becomes on this defensive end and our wraps just going to be a little bit tighter and it's going to more than likely be for this uh, middle linebacker that's going to be right here. Since this end here has played outside that would then tell our tackle he's going to go for backside linebacker will the more than likely be here scraping over top we'll have this double team working for the backside here linebacker and then we'll more than likely if they're going to be playing this type of a, of a defense where this linebacker is uncovered for or he's on the line of scrimmage we're going to have to do something to occupy him whether it be through some sort of a motion some throw, sort of a fake and run our quarterback you name it but that is something that you'd have to account for when they're going through a scheme and now we're going to look at some different ways that oklahoma goes out and accounts for these different looks so now we're going to look at a little bit of film from this past season watching Jalen Hurts and the Oklahoma offense run their GT counter scheme. So when we look at this particular clip, you're going to see the wide receiver come in orbit motion. And the reason why he's in orbit motion is because when Oklahoma runs this GT counter scheme on this particular play, Jalen Hurts is going to be reading this defensive end near the pulling guards. And if that defensive end were to crash, his option then is going to be able to throw the bubble here with two blockers out in the perimeter ready to go. Now, if you look play side in terms of everything, all the rules are not going to change. And by this receiver going in orbit motion, it's actually bringing this corner into the box. And then now, since we have a tight end who has a defender inside of him, this corner will now become our end man of the line of scrimmage for our pulling guard. So if we go through all of our rules, you have your center here with a play side guy in his A-gap, he's gonna block down. There's nobody in the guard's play side A-gap, so him and the tackle will work. A double team on the defender here, the three technique, who's lined up in the play side tackle's play side B-gap, which is his responsibility. So those two will work a double team and carry that double team to the backside linebacker. Since you have a tight end here with a defender in his play side gap, which in this case is play side C gap, he would treat him just like what our tackles rules would be. If he crosses his face, he's just going to wash him down and take him. If he goes over top and disappears out of the play, he will leave them as he then becomes the end man in the line of scrimmage. If he's just head up, he's also responsible to take them. If he wasn't even in the play altogether, he would go to the first linebacker backside. But in this case, we see he is in his play side C gap, so the tight end is going to take him. That makes this cornerback the end man on the line of scrimmage. So our guard is going to pull and kick him out. The tackle then is going to pull and wrap for the first linebacker play side or the front side linebacker towards the play. And so as you see this play develop, you're actually going to see Jalen Hurts make the incorrect read. And that's going to lead him to try to keep the ball late. This play side end makes a very good play, which makes it confusing for Jalen up front. Still works out for Hertz, and he still gets a good gain out of the play. Now you can see the tight, and when the tight comes up, now really kind of look at how they execute their rules. Are they able to execute here? Now you can see this one technique. It's pretty heavy. We have a down block here. We have these two here, since he doesn't have a threat here, can work this double team and carry it backside. This tight end has a defender in his C gap. He's going to work here, and now we got pulling guard to kick out the end man in the line of scrimmage, pulling tackle to wrap for play side linebacker. So in this clip, you're going to see them run versus UCLA once again, their GT counter scheme to the right. And you can see here they're in a multiple front, which can be treated like a forefront. And as they go through their rules, everything checks out and you see a great hole hit a little bit later than it normally would. So we're first, because this view is not the greatest in terms of seeing alignment, we're first going to watch it through here just as the wide tape. And as you can see here, the defensive end is going to crash, which forces a log then by our backside guard who's pulling, which then makes the pull of the backside tackle just a little bit wider. So you can see here from just the tight view, once everybody gets set and needs to make some adjustments here with his running back and get him on the proper side. Once he does that, and once he gets set, we'll go through our rule checklist. So now that everybody is set and in, in where they need to be, they just go through a checklist. Our center here doesn't have anybody in the backside A gap. If he wanted to, he could help here with the guard or he can just simply work back towards the three technique on the backside. That would then leave the guard. Does he have somebody on him or play side? He does, he would take him. This play side tackle does not have anybody inside him. So he would then step with the play side tackle towards the backside linebacker. 
and meet him right about here, probably for this linebacker right here who's going to be scraping over the top. Backside guard then is going to pull for the end man on the line of scrimmage. Backside tackle isn't going to wrap depending on where that ends up. Now we know from the wide view, this guy is going to crash, which is then going to force the backside guard to log him. That then is going to prompt our backside tackle to have a little bit more of a wide pull um, outside for his wrap. And so you're going to see that here transpire here from the tight view. So as you see things here, everybody goes through. We have a, a, um, a defensive end that crashes down. And as he crashes down, it just promotes a little bit more of a wide pull here by the backside tackle. So you can see here, center goes to the backside three technique. Everybody stays and maintains gap integrity. Shoulders are coming down here, which tells him that he needs to squeeze and, and log the defensive end. He does that, prompting a little bit wider of a pull here from our backside tackle. Tailback just needs to be extremely patient, which he is in this case, sticks his foot in the ground and gets a nice game against this defense. For this clip, you're gonna look at how Oklahoma runs their GT counter scheme, and you're gonna see a keep read here by Jalen Hurts. Now you can see the front that you see here. It looks like a three front and truly it is. Um, but when you see the tight view, you can almost treat it like a four front. And if you follow those rules, you're gonna see that they treat it and run it correctly by obeying all their different rules. But Jalen Hurts is going to be getting a keep read off of that um, front that he's going to see in the look from the defense. So you can see it here from the wide that he does have a keep read. Once we see the tight here, we can go through the rules and analyze um, exactly what those rules looked like. So if you look at this tight view here, once that Oklahoma gets the alignment that they need, they'll be running counter here towards the left. And so you have your center who's going to be able to still go through all of his rules. He still has a guy in his play side A, so he had down block here. Our play side guard has nobody again in his play side A, but the play side tackle has somebody in his play side B. So these two will work a double team, carrying that double to the backside linebacker located here. Then we have our end man in the line of scrimmage here, even though it is an outside linebacker. We would then have a backside guard pull and kick him out. Backside tackle wrap inside for the front side linebacker. And since they're running away from the tight end, this tight end would simply kind of sift to second level in hopes of sealing this uh, linebacker in case of a keep from Jalen Hurts. So as you watch him go through it here, all of them follow the rules. That defensive end crashes hard and Jalen Hurts keeps the ball for a gain off the back end. It's a great way to protect your GT counter scheme, especially if you're getting really aggressive defensive ends. So in this clip, you're going to see a traditional odd front team here in South Dakota go against the GT counter scheme of Oklahoma. Now they're going to be running this GT counter to the left. And so it's difficult to see here in terms of all their rules, but you're going to see them still maintain all the same rules that they have in terms of their gap integrity. You're going to see them when they're pulling here, uh, execute perfectly the log technique. See the log there by the pulling guard allows the tackle to try to go outside of that. And unfortunately he's not able to get much further upfield by that point though the running back is able to make a play. So if you can see this front here and we go through all of our rules and we look at how all of them are going to apply, some of the things you can look at here, you're gonna have more of a shade here on your center. So now that odd front, you can simply play on the backside A gap. You're gonna have the play side tackle and guard working a double team here. It's the backside linebacker. You're gonna have the tight end down block here on the walked up outside linebacker. Guard's going to pull. If anybody shows and presents themselves, he's going to log. If not, he's going to go kick out the first guy that shows um, in the alley. Backside tackle then is going to wrap and try to go inside of that if he executes a kickout block. If he does not execute a kickout block, then he's going to wrap outside if the play is logged. So as we see this play develop, we're going to see those things transpire. So as you see here on the snap, you're going to see this guard and tackle. Although they're still trying to execute a double team here, you're gonna see that defensive tackle here, he's gonna slant into the gap. And so as that happens, you just maintain gap integrity. So your steps are gonna take you through your gap because your eyes are still gonna maintain your play side gap, which handles any kind of slanting or any kind of twisting perfectly. So now that allows this tackle to release to still the backside linebacker where he was going to go anyway. Now he just doesn't have a partner carrying a double team his way. You see here now that the tight end is able to 
execute the down block here on the defensive uh, end here or outside linebacker, which then takes the edge away. Pulling guard then is going to take care of the first guy in the alley. So as he pulls, the first guy in the alley to show is going to be this middle linebacker scraping over top. Knowing he probably can't get a kickout block, he's going to log him. That makes this backside tackles path a little bit further, and he's going to try to push out or seal that linebacker as well, which he does. Gives a gap here then for the running back to exploit. So in this play, you're also going to finally see here a traditional three front versus Oklahoma. And you're going to see how they are able to execute their rules still with everything in motion at the same point. It's going to be easier to see here when we get to the tight view. As you can see here, everything's lined up. So we're going to be running GT counter to the left versus this traditional three front. So now you're going to have your play side tackle here that's going to be reading the uh, alignment and reading the technique here of the defensive end. If we, everybody follows the rules, he's simply going to step down and have this guy and maintain gap integrity. He's going to have this guard here who can work a double team still with the center by working towards his play side A gap and using the center in him to carry towards the backside linebacker. That would then leave here the backside guard to pull, reading this defensive end's technique. If he goes out, he's the kickout guy, which would then bring out the wrap by the backside tackle. If this guy slants down, that's going to then be taken care of here by the play side tackle, then having this play side guard wrapping and either kicking out an end man on the line of scrimmage who presents himself from over here, potentially an outside linebacker, or a scraping linebacker over here from the middle linebacker position. And he'll either kick him out if he can get there early enough or log him. Again, if he logs, that then tells the backside tackle his pole is going to be a little bit wider. So as we can see here with motion, this defensive end decides to go out. So our tackle stays still on his path and maintains gap integrity. Play side or backside guard that's pulling now, that becomes his kickout man. Tackle fits right underneath that kickout block for the first player that shows. And although they don't get a minimal gain, it is an executed technique to the right way uh, by Oklahoma. So I hope you all gathered something out of today's uh, video clinic. I know we looked at different clips from the 2019 Oklahoma offense, how they run their GT counter scheme versus a four front and also a three front. In my next video, I'm going to look at different variations of Oklahoma's GT counter scheme in different ways they try to protect the scheme so teams don't have as much success stopping it on a given week.